Hi, I am Manmaz. Welcome back to my channel. Now today's our topic is environmental monitoring program in food industry part 2. How to design a hygienic zoning system? Those who have not watched in my part 1 video, I have given link below. Please watch. In our part 1 video, we have discussed about the importance of environmental monitoring program in RT sections. What is hygienic zoning system? Why do we need hygienic zoning system? What is the objective of environmental monitoring program? What does FDA FISMA says? These points we have discussed in our part 1 video. Please watch. Now today's our topic is how to design environmental monitoring program in a food industry. Now let us start the video. In order to design a good environmental monitoring programs, there are nine steps involved in it. The step one is create an EMP team, environmental monitoring program team. Then identify the EMP areas in the facility. Step two is establish the zoning concept. Step three is indicator bacteria. And step four is sampling and frequency. Step five is baseline target. Sixth one is product testing. 7th step is corrective action, 8th step is verification and 9th step is documentation. So let us go in details. Now the first step is create EMP team, identify EMP areas in the food facility. So create the EMP team. So EMP team leader will play the crucial role to empower the team members. You should have in-depth knowledge, uh, food environment, food processing environment, how the microorganisms will behave and it should be from life science background having at least minimum 5 years of experience. So the team leader should have a competent knowledge on microbial behavior in food processing environment. So you should empower the team and you can include the team members like factory manager, QA manager, uh, line in charge, sanitary team members, uh, supervisors including workers also. So you can he can, he can prepare the team first. He has to establish EMP team. Then once he establishes the EMP team, he has to maintain the separate file for the EMP meetings or EMP baseline targets or regular monitoring verification systems are working well or not. After creating an EMP team, they walk through around the plant to identify areas where the product may be vulnerable to contamination. Using facility map, so the team should carry the facility map, food facility layout and using the facility map they have to mark the hygienic zones and identify specific sampling sites. Now the second step is utilize the zoning concept to identify the sampling locations. Utilize the zoning concept based on the sanitary zoning concepts. The facility operations are divided into four zones. Zone 1, Zone 2, Zone 3 and Zone 4. Let us have a look. Zone 1, Zone 2 and Zone 3 and Zone 4. Zone 1. Zone 1 is all direct food contact surfaces. Examples are conveyor belts, infeed conveyors, utensils, working tables, basins, these are all etc. So zone 1. As per the FDA and CDC recommends that in the zone 1 we should not sampling the pathogenic bacteria because regularly we are doing we are sanitizing the PPCs primary food contact surfaces. So zone 1 sampling should be 10 to 20 percentage. Then what about the zone 2? Zone 2 is adjacent to food contact surfaces means indirect food contact surfaces like Adjacent means like bearings, equipment panels, aprons, rollers, agitator motors, etc. Which are just adjacent, adjacent to the food contact surfaces, means indirect food contact surfaces. In this area, sampling should be 40 to 50 percent and pathogenic testing also should be done in this area, except zone 1. Then what about the zone 3? 
जोन थ्री इंक्लूड एवरीथिंग एल्स इन प्रोडक्शन एरिया इंक्लूड एवरीथिंग एल्स इन प्रोडक्शन एरिया मीन रेस्ट द पॉट फ्लोर वाल्स सीलिंग्स ड्रेनेजेस एक्सेट्रा वी हैव टू डू द सैंपलिंग इन जोन थ्री ऑल्सो जोन थ्री सैंपलिंग माइट बी थर्टी परसेंट टू फोर्टी परसेंट प्रोडक्ट टेस्टिंग शुड बी डन इफ जोन थ्री इज कंटामेड कंटामेटेड विथ पोटेंशियल पैथोजेनिक बैक्टीरिया मे बी द चांसेस ऑफ कंटामिनेटिंग जोन टू एंड चांसेस ऑफ कंटामिनेटिंग जोन वन एंड द लास्ट वन इज जोन फोर हाइजेनिक जोन फोर दिस इज नॉन प्रोडक्शन एरिया which is away from the food handling areas for example change rooms office rooms rest rooms break rooms etc if zone 4 is contaminated with pathogenic bacteria then it may contaminate with the zone 3 after that zone 2 then finally zone 1 also so these are the zoning system as per the hygienic zoning concept in every food processing facility which is having rt sections have to design the four zones based on that based on the risk assessment they have to establish the sampling frequency in zone 1 10 to 20% sampling for testing and zone 2 40 to 50% sampling for testing and zone 3 30 to 40% and zone 4 is below 10% sampling now the third step is indicator bacteria are indicator microorganisms why the indicator microorganisms bacteria are required to verify the emp programs because indicator microorganisms are available in i number and easy to identify these are the indicators for the possible contamination of pathogenic bacteria in rt processing environment for example in dry processing environment salmonella is the pathogenic pathogenic bacteria whereas enterobacteria will be considered as an indicative parameters if enterobacterial load is there we can easily enumerate and we can easily enumerate enterobacteria so if enumeration uh, if after enumeration if you can we found enterobacteria more frequent and more numbers then there may be the chances of possible contamination of or possible reintroduction of pathogenic bacteria like salmonella in wet processing industry for example listeria monocytogens listeria monocytogens like indicative parameters like coliforms or listeria species also we can take it as consideration if coliforms presents is there or if any uh, listeria species are there then we can consider it as a indicative organisms maybe the chances of possible contamination of pathogenic bacteria like listeria monocytogens so for that only we have to monitor the indicative parameters in food processing environment especially not in sections for indicator monitoring the target and action levels should be established after baseline have been established it is difficult to interpret results if there is no basis for comparison so the baseline data collection typically involves a higher level of sampling over a defined period of time and is an attempt to capture a snapshot of the stable a routine operations that's all about the part 2 videos how to design a environmental monitoring program in our part 3 video we will discuss about sampling sampling techniques sampling frequencies and how to establish baselines and establish baseline targets for the monitoring or indicative parameters and corrective action procedures and documentations That's all about the video friends thank you and bye bye